acronym of SOKOTOA at the top of all your pages so you don't forget that nice little ratio um, memorization tool for us. So in this problem, good news, we have a right triangle, which means right triangle SOKOTOA is going to work. The problem is that we're trying to find this marked angle, and this marked angle isn't part of a right triangle. It's part of this yellow triangle, which isn't a right triangle. We can only use SOKOTOA on right triangles. So what we're going to do is work with this entire pink triangle to find the measurement of this big angle. Then we're also going to use this smaller blue right triangle to find the measurement of this smaller angle right here. So if we know the entire thing and we know this little part, we can subtract them to get the angle measurement that we want. All right, so um, I'm going to go after this big pink angle first. And there's no letters in here. So just to clarify a little bit, I'll put the letters A, B, C, and D. And um, let's see, let's go after the measurement of angle B, D, A, this angle right here. From this angle, 4 is the opposite, 10 is the adjacent. Since we're dealing with opposite and adjacent, I could say the tangent of angle BDA is an opposite of 4 divided by the adjacent of 10. And my goal here wasn't to find the tangent. My goal was to find the measurement of the angle. So if you take the tangent inverse of both sides, that'll eliminate this tangent. So it would have the measurement of angle BDA is the tangent inverse of 4 over 10. And this is an exact value. To figure out what it is as an approximate value, I'm going to use my calculator. So tangent inverse of 4 divided by 10 is approximately 21.801 degrees. I'm going to store this as alpha A, keep it precise in my calculator. And then in my notes, 21.801 stored as alpha A in my calculator. So that's the measurement of just this little angle right here that I have three marks on. For that bigger angle, angle CDA, this whole big angle, tangent of angle CDA um, has an opposite of 8 divided by an adjacent of 10. Once again, take the tangent inverse of both sides. And so our exact measurement of angle CDA is a tangent inverse of 8 over 10. I'll go back to my calculator. Tangent inverse of 8 divided by 10 comes out to 38.660. 38.660. And I'm going to store that as alpha B in my calculator. So store alpha B. There it is. And as I look at these two different examples on the calculator, um, take the big angle B minus the smaller angle A, and that's going to give us left over that angle that we're looking for. So I'll go back to my calculator, alpha B minus alpha A. And my angle comes out to 16.858 degrees. So this is the angle I was actually looking for. So I'm going to make sure I write this one down. I'll go to three decimal places to be precise to the nearest thousandth. And that's the measurement of that marked angle that we were given. In order to find it, we had to go indirect like that because the angle we wanted was not part of a right triangle. Example two, same idea. To find the sum of these two marked angles, we're going to have to do a little bit of it indirect. Um, I could use Pythagorean theorem to find some of these lengths, but there's really no need to. Because in this blue right triangle, it's already a right triangle. And from this marked angle, I'm going to call it angle theta. 25 is the adjacent. 30 is the hypotenuse. Um, adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine, right? It's so ka toa. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse ratio. I don't need the opposite. So I'll say that the cosine of my angle theta, this marked angle, is adjacent of 25 divided by hypotenuse of 30. Take the cosine inverse of both sides. Anytime you're trying to find the angle, you're going to take the inverse trig. And to my calculator, second cosine of 25 divided by 30 comes out to this measurement. I'll store this as my new alpha A in this problem, 33.557. 
33. Point, I forgot it already. 557. 557 degrees, and it is stored as alpha A. Then the other angle that I want, I'll call this one alpha. To figure out that measurement, I'm going to need to figure out this entire yellow angle minus this smaller gray angle. So yellow minus gray will give us the one that we want. So um, to do this, let me look at the yellow angle first. This yellow angle is going to be um, adjacent of 25, hypotenuse of 50. So the cosine of, I can call that big hole angle beta, cosine of beta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So beta is the cosine inverse of 25 over 50. And then just this gray angle, um, I can call that one, I'll call it X. I don't always have to use Greek letters. So for X, the cosine of angle X is adjacent of 25 divided by hypotenuse of 40. So X is the cosine inverse of 25 over 40. And if we took beta minus x, that will give us our angle alpha, this marked one that we have. So in my calculator, well, cosine inverse of 25 divided by 50 minus the cosine inverse of 25 divided by 40. That angle comes out to 8.682. I could store this one as B in my calculator. So store as alpha B. And then this problem says to find the sum of the two marked angles. I want to take theta plus alpha. In other words, just add those together. So alpha A plus alpha B comes out to 42.239. 42.239. Forty-two point two three nine degrees. So, a little note on this one: I could find this first marked angle directly because it was an angle in an in a right triangle. But to find this other one, we again we had to go indirect because that angle itself was not part of a right triangle. Next page: Find the exact value for each of the following. Um, this is based off of one of our special right triangles, the thirty sixty ninety. If you recall, the short leg is the key. So if I call this length whatever I want, I could say this length is 6. I could say this length is 13. I could say this length is x, whatever. The hypotenuse is twice as long as that. And the long leg is root 3 times bigger. So here's my 30 degrees. Here's my 60 degrees. And here's my special right triangle. Now, as far as the questions go, the cosine of 30 degrees based off of Sokotoa again. So the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So from our 30 degree angle, we're going to take our adjacent divided by our hypotenuse. And what's significant here is that it's a fraction. We can divide both of those by x, and we're left with the square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 30 is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Divide by x again, and we get 1 half. The tangent of 30 is opposite of x, divided by adjacent of x root 3, divide them both by x, 1 over root 3. Well, we want to rationalize that, multiply numerator and denominator by root 3, which would give us root 3 over 3. Next, cosine of 60. So we're using 60 degrees as our reference angle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent of x divided by hypotenuse of 2x, divided both by x, we get 1 half. Sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse. That's x root 3 over 2x, divided both by x, we get root 3 over 2. And lastly, tangent of 6 is opposite over adjacent. That's x root 3 over x, divided both by x, and we get root 3. Now, a quick observation here. The cosine of 60 is equal to the sine of 30, and the cosine of 30 is equal to the sine of 60, and that's no coincidence there. Cosine of 30 was using the adjacent to the 30 over the hypotenuse. The sine of 60 was using the opposite of 60 divided by the hypotenuse. They're using the same hypotenuse, which was the 2x, 
but the adjacent to the 30 degrees, which is this one, is the same as the opposite of 60 degrees. So we're using the same value, so they should have the same. One thing you'll notice in general is that when two angles are complementary, whether it's 30 and 60 or 20 degrees and 70 degrees, the cosine of one angle is equal to the sine of its complement. That's always going to be true. All right, to example four. We're told that the sine of theta is equal to 3x. So if I were to draw this example, sine is based off of Sokotoa. This is my angle theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So from here, my opposite over hypotenuse would look like that. The other thing it says is that the cosine of the angle theta, so the adjacent over hypotenuse from this marked angle, the one we're talking about, is 5x over 2. So the adjacent would be 5x and the hypotenuse would be 2 which is kind of a problem based off of this. The hypotenuse can't be one and at the same time also be equal to two. So to make this work, I can change three X over one into six X over two. So six X over two. And this cos or the sine ratio is still opposite over hypotenuse. It would simplify down to that three X that we were given. However, it also accommodates this one now and that the cosine, the Sokotoa, the adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse is also now 5x over 2. So I have a triangle that makes sense. Now to the questions. It says, what is the tangent of 90 minus theta? Where is this 90 minus theta at? In the right triangle, um, we have the 90 degree angle. So these other two acute angles have to be complementary, adding up to the other 90 degrees. So whatever this angle is, the other angle is going to be 90 minus that. So this 90 minus theta that's being talked about is just the other acute angle. The question, what is the tangent of this angle? What is the opposite divided by adjacent? Well, we get this 5x over 6x, but divide them both by x and we get 5 6 The last question is, how big is this angle theta that we're talking about? Well, I'll go back over here. Um, from theta, from this theta we have, the opposite over adjacent is going to be 6x over 5x. It's tangent because I know the opposite and adjacent both. I chose to use these because they both have an x in them, and those will cancel each other out. So here is my tangent. Take the tangent inverse of both sides, and this is the exact value for that angle. It's nice and precise. And then on my calculator, I could take the tangent inverse of 6 over 5, um, that have to be done on the calculator, and I'll just tell you it comes out to about 50.194 degrees. Solve for each variable. We have an x, we have a y. I'm going to start with this yellow right triangle, and the fact that it's a right triangle is very significant again. From this known 47 degrees, the y is the opposite, and the 13 is the hypotenuse. So I'm thinking in terms of Sokotoa again. What trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? That would be our sine function. I'm using sine, not cosine or tangent, because I'm not dealing with AH. I'm not dealing with OA. I'm dealing with the opposite and hypotenuse from this marked angle that we know. So sine of 47 degrees is equal to the opposite of Y divided by the hypotenuse of 13. Multiply both sides by 13 to isolate the Y and get it by itself. So y is equal to 13 times the sine of 47 degrees. I already know the angle measurement, so I don't have to use an inverse. On my calculator, I'm just going to type it in as 13 times the sine of 47. And that comes out to 9.508. So there's my exact and approximate. To get the x value, I need to use a right triangle again. And... This is my right triangle. In this right triangle, I have 50 degrees. Awesome. I want the x. x is the opposite. I don't know this length, but I do know y. I just found it a second ago. It's that 13 times the sine of 47. So from the 50 degrees, I want the opposite. This time, this length is adjacent to the 50. 
So I'm going to use TOA. Tangent is opposite of or adjacent. Tangent of 50 is equal to the opposite of x divided by the adjacent, which is that 13 times the sine of 47. Algebraically, multiply both sides by 13 sine of 47. That isolates our x. So as an exact value, x is equal to this, which looks very random, um, but it is precise. I need to go to my calculator, multiply 13 times the sine of 47 times a tangent of 50. I just did 13 times the sine of 47, so now I'm going to multiply that by the tangent of 50 on my calculator. That comes out to about 11.331. So exact and approximate. Number six, trying to find the measurement of this marked angle. Notice it is an isosceles triangle, which is significant. Without that, we wouldn't be able to do this problem. We can drop down an altitude. The thing about this altitude is not, not only is it an altitude, but it bisects the triangle. Right? I could prove that this yellow triangle, try it again, this yellow triangle is congruent to the triangle on the right. And because of that, um, corresponding parts are all congruent to each other. So that's why this angle at the top is going to be bisected. Um, this length going across the bottom now is just going to be 4. Right, half the 8 or 4. And I want the measurement of this angle. I'll call it theta for now. From theta, 4 is the opposite. 12 is the hypotenuse. What trig function uses opposite hypotenuse? Be the sine. So sine of theta is equal to opposite of 4 divided by hypotenuse of 12. Take the sine inverse to get the theta by itself, and that's the measurement of theta. Now, that is theta. Theta wasn't the marked angle. It was just half of the entire angle, so we're going to need to double that. So 2 theta is 2 times the sine inverse of 4 over 12. So that's what I'm going to put into my calculator. 2 sine inverse of 4 over 12 comes out to about 38.942. Last problem. And here it is. We're trying to find the cosine of beta, first of all. And I know the numbers are 12 and 40. And I can use those, or I know that eventually these are fractions. I can use a similar triangle, which would have the same trig ratios as these, to make my calculations simpler. So how about we divide this by 4, divide this by 4, smaller numbers, right? If I call this x, then 3 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. x squared equals 100 minus 9 once you bring that over. So x is the square root of 91. So I have simpler numbers to work with. This bottom side is opposite to beta. The 3 is opposite to angle beta, and the 10 is the hypotenuse to beta. First question, cosine of beta. Cosine is, um, I should say adjacent on it. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Notice it doesn't say how big is angle beta. It just says what is the cosine of beta equals. I don't want to put a decimal. I want to keep it nice and precise. The sine of beta is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite was 3. The hypotenuse was 10. The tangent of beta is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. I can't have the square root in the denominator. So it's going to be 3 root 91 over 91. And then last one, tangent of 90 minus beta. Well, 90 minus beta is the other acute angle. So from here, the opposite over adjacent is root 91 over 3. And there's our tangent. Again, none of these do they actually ask for the angle. So you're not taking an inverse. You're leaving it in that fraction form.